All right, welcome back. It is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we are staying um, on Plateau State today because there was an attack. And uh, let me just give you a bit of a background. All right, um, Tigbe village of Amyango district, Rigwe chief Dom Basa local government area of Plateau State was attacked by Fulani militia in the wee hours of um, Friday, November 26, where not fewer than 10 persons were killed and several houses, you know, as well as food grains burnt down, while others sustained uh, varying degrees of injury. We have the National Publicity Secretary, Irrigue Development Association, Davidson Malison, joining us uh, this morning via Zoom. Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Mr. Malison. Now, good morning to you. All right, we understand that there was um, a terrible attack in your chiefdom on Friday. Can you just run us through? Let's understand exactly what happened and the extent of damage. Uh, good morning to you, but uh, it's my pleasure to be in your uh, studio via Zoom this morning. As um, you earlier uh, said, uh, there was an attack in Rigwe chiefdom, particularly in Miango district in a village called Tegbe. Uh, community on the 26th of uh, November 2021. Uh, that particular village uh, was attacked by Fulani headsmen in the wee hours of uh, that uh, particular 26th of November. Uh, Ten people were killed at that particular attack. Uh, three people sustained varying degrees of injury uh, 114 houses were set ablaze. Uh, 57 uh, foot bands uh, made up of uh, already or newly harvested uh, food crops were completely destroyed. Uh, that particular uh, community was hurt, you know, quite a very uh, disheartening and a worrisome situation. I think that is the preamble of uh, what happened on that particular uh, day. Some of the uh, people were even burnt down to ashes. You know, so, uh, children of four, six, and eight-year-old were part of those that were killed. Quite uh, worrisome and sad. It's a kind of a very despair situation down here. Okay, um, so can you also tell us, you know, what could be uh, responsible? What is the cause of this attack? Is it, you know, uh, what could be the issue? Is it a boundary dispute? What could be responsible for this attack? Yeah, what, what exactly is responsible for uh, the attack? You know, one might be asking himself or herself, uh, what has been the major cost that Rigue Nation has been under attacks for for several years. It will be, you know, uh, a thing to put it on your notice to know that Rigue Nation has been under attack for past 20 years since the year 2020, uh, since the year 2000 by the, this same Fulani uh, marauders, this same Fulani terrorists. But uh, majorly, the, the major cause that one can attribute the attack is not far, is not something new other than an attempt to forcefully take over our ancestral land. Uh, it is a kind of a, a struggle they've been doing for many years in order to see that uh, we've been forcefully evicted from our ancestral lands, the lands that were bequeathed by our forefathers to us. I think majorly that will be uh, the cause of uh, this whole a thing that has been happening to Rigo Nation. And one could again say it is an orchestrated plan uh, for a total annihilation of a Rigo race completely on earth. And these are things uh, that have majorly uh, served as uh, factors uh, militating against all of this. All right, uh, Davidson, this is not the first attack on your, your chief term. Over time, I know uh, we've had to talk about um, attacks on Rigway chiefdom. We've even had to bring um, the uh, Fulani Hertzman, you know, their representative on the show, you know, and uh, we placed us uh, side by side uh, with your people. And over time, they have been, uh, you know, 
recognized that um, such claims were not really founded that over time when there were attacks uh, and that community, you know, they are the ones that are quick to be blamed. But my question right now would be that um, over the years since um, these attacks is not really fresh, um, what has been done, you know, specifically maybe uh, a Georgia between um, your community and of course uh, the Miet Allah, you know, the, the cattle rearers, you know, what, what has been done over time uh, to ensure some sort of a mediation so that um, all of these gray areas, you know, will be or would be tackled? Uh, I think uh, as it is now, we, we, we stayed with uh, Fulani uh, people uh, for so many years and we coexisted peacefully until they made up their mind to, on their own, leave our chiefdom. Uh, we didn't uh, attack them when they were leaving. It's just like when someone comes to stay in your place and the person later feels he wants to relocate to another place, you don't have uh, you know, that prerequisite right to stop the person from movement. Uh, constitution permits that uh, uh, in every Nigerian has a right to go and live wherever he or she desires. And so they left our community, they left our chiefdom, and that was after uh, we began to experience uh, this series of attacks. Now, coming back to your question, what sort of mediation, what sort of dialogues have we been engaging ourselves with the leadership of Miyeti Allah? You know, I, I have always said that we've held several meetings, several engagements, several dialogues, several mediations together with them. But from all indications, uh, the Fulani people seems not to know what peace is all about. Sometimes when you come to a round table, you have a discussion, you know, they take their tea, they eat their food, but what they have already configured in their minds is something that uh, is really there and then they will want to implement and execute it. And now let me bring it to fact, precisely uh, almost on every after engagement or dialogue or mediation meeting we had with them, we will always experience an attack Precisely on the, on, the, on the 11th of June, we had a meeting together with them at the Sector 3 Command of the Operation Safe Heaven Plateau State. And after that meeting, the next Sunday, they attacked one of us and killed him. And again, on the 5th of July this same year, we held a meeting together with them at the local government secretariat together with the leadership of Mietiala, Basa local government, and all the elders were in attendance of that meeting. But what happened? You know, after the meeting, one of the traditional rulers of Rigue Nation, three of them were attacked, were ambushed along Tos Amo Division on their way going back. And then one of the chieftaincy title holders that was together with the uh, district heads of Miango sustained varying degree of injury. So one will begin to ask questions. Does these people really understand what peace is all about? You come together, you show as if you're ready to make peace, but immediately after a peace meeting, suppose in court, a peace meeting, you launch an attack, so one is beginning to feel these people are just pretending, are just trying to fool people, you know, are just trying to tell the world that they are not peaceful. Like, let me buttress this point by saying here, uh, global index uh, terrorism have a Max Fulani as the fourth deadliest terrorist group in West Africa, you know, after ISIS, ISWAP, and Boko Haram. And so these people are supposed to be treated in the language they understand so that they will stop unleashing the carnage on innocent Nigerians. All right, Davison, uh, let's also introduce uh, Niru Abdullahi, who is uh, the Plateau State Chairman, Meiti Allah Cattle's Breeder Association. Uh, Niru Abdullahi. Uh, yes, I'm with you. All right, thank you for joining us. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, we've been having this conversation as regards the attack uh, that happened in uh, the community, Irigwe community. And uh, just as Davidson has mentioned, uh, because we have Davidson Mallison, who is a, a spokesperson of uh, the Irigwe community. Now, he has said that these attacks were carried by uh, the Fulani, uh, you know, Heathers. Can you please uh, react to that? Yes. Uh... I just heard him alleging and accusing Fulani and even and labeling them as terrorists in the world. This is, I, I want to tell him shame on him because he has not given you the true narrative of what exactly happened. If you say you are, you are being attacked by Fulani in Tagbe, let me start from that angle. Uh, is it because you have been attacking Fulani in the same area and killing them, killing their economy, destroying their properties in the same area? For instance, you have killed Fini Fulani alongside two other Chawe people in Cameroon Chawe last October. And in the same thing, for Durum Kafa, you went and killed Siri Fulani just in the same October. In Badurum Sama, just in November, you killed another two Fulani boys, injured another Siri, all later died in the hospital. You are telling me they are, are they on that mission of reprisal attack, that is why they are killing your people. And if that is the case, why didn't you alert other communities that you have issues with, such as the, the child that you killed their imam and one other in Cameroon Chawai? Or the Rukubas, whom you killed their three persons alongside one Fulani, along Dogondaji, in, 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 in the same pasta. Or are you telling me you are not alleging there are 10 people whom you killed their farmers just recently? Why are you alleging the Fulani? Why? Let me ask you some questions. Why is it that all the communities around Pasa, around Iribe, that surround them, your neighbors are in peace with the planet. Okay, so um, let's also find out now. If, uh, like you rightly mentioned, that the Fulani headers are not responsible for this attack, what exactly do you think is the situation uh, that is going on in the Rigwe community? I have not uh, concluded my my what he was saying. He was just telling you about meetings with government and security agencies. That number one, after the meetings, we are not ready for the meetings to resolve the problem. Number two, we are, we are attacking them immediately after each and every meeting. Let me ask you, was it not in media, when they came out, quick and clear, after the governor has summoned us, we sit down with the, His Excellency, the executive governor of Lato said, on ways to resolve this matter. Subsequently, two days later, they released a press statement telling the world that it is a lie. They have not engaged anybody. There is not any contract between them and government of Plato and, 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 and the Fulani. And he is telling you this. Shame on him, please. All right, uh, uh, let's just uh, be uh, uh, careful with the words we use. Uh, you know, let's try as much as possible to be uh, civil. But let me get back to David Sin and Malison. Uh, I don't know if you follow the conversation now. Uh, what Nu um, Abdullah has said so far, he made some, you know, allegations, and I'm going to just throw them all out to you. He said that um, other communities around Irigwe are at peace, you know, with the full and the headspan. He was wondering why it's always uh, with them. Then again, he said um, uh, other communities that, you, uh, that the Irigwe people um, also um, have issues with other uh, 
neighbors uh, around them. Uh, he mentioned some of them, he mentioned the Riku bus and all of that. He's saying that um, over time, to him, uh, he mentioned some cases that happened in October where your community, you know, allegedly attacked um, the Fulani herders. I just want to get some clarifications concerning all of what he had said. Yeah, um, I, 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 anytime I am um, being joined uh, uh, by always Nuru, uh in an interview of this nature i always ask myself uh, this question nuru is an elderly uh, man whom i respect and i expect him to you know to come out with facts anytime he's coming to a public domain of this nature you understand this is a national television you come and you know give facts and then you know accept responsibility this when we engage ourselves in doing it, it will help this nation progress forward. But let me let me let me address some of the issues he he raised. You know, he said, "Why are we alleging in court that these attacks have been carried out by Fulani uh, uh, terrorists?" You understand? You know, uh, we have evidences. We don't just come out to public and then begin to attribute that these attacks have been perpetrated by Fulani uh, militia. You know, for instance, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in July, when these people killed four of our people at Incha, at, uh, at uh, Inche Tahu village, sorry, they took away phone belonging to one of the persons they killed. And lo and behold, they call. We have the voice note. We record it. They accepted that they carried out the attack. And then we are coming to launch another attack. Now, on August 2nd, on August 2nd, 2021, when they totally sacked Jebu Miango and all the neighboring communities, they, they wrote on the, on the roads and on the walls that they have conquered regeneration. They are Fulani and they have finished. They've, all the records are there. So when an elderly person is coming to dispute the fact that they are not carrying out this attack, one will begin to question that elderly stage, that age. That is his age. That is a stage that someone is supposed to be telling the truth. Now, at that particular place that that attack was carrying on, on the ninth of June, they destroy over 45 farmlands at Zongru, just that, uh, that particular Tegwe village. So when we begin to ask questions, now let me address the point where he said we had a meeting with the governor on the way forward, and then two days later, we came out with a statement saying that we didn't, part we didn't uh, 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 partake in anything of sort. Now, I expect Nuru, as an educated man, to have gone through carefully and meticulously through the release that was made. Now, what was it that we came out with? We said the statement, the national dailies and other news agencies were carrying a report that we signed a peace pact with them, whereas it was just a meeting that the governor portrays on the committee that was set up by Plato State Peace Building Agency between the Fulani and the Irigwe people on how to fashion out ways to bring in our peace together. The governor at that meeting directed the director general Plato State Peace Building Agency to go and continue with that committee so that they will come out with a resolution on how to live together. And then reports we are circulating that we sign a peace pact with them. So the content of that statement that was released is something that Nuru's understanding should have reflected or tell him that it was not a statement that we say we didn't partake in the meeting, but rather we were debunking that we, we signed any peace pact, asking whether there was any medium or any space that he signed and then the people signed which was a peace pact. You know, sometimes, you know, understanding matters a lot on issues of this nature. So I expect Nuru to be coming to tell the world exactly what is happening. We didn't sign any peace pact with them. 
News went viral that a peace pact was signed. So we had to pen down and tell the world. It was just a meeting on how to bring about peace in our community. There was nothing like a peace pact that was signed. Ask right. him now to tell you All right. whether, we'll get, we'll sign, whether he signed or not. All right, let's um, get back to Nuru Abdullahi, you know, so let's get your reaction. So he has said that um, what um, their community did was um, debunking an alleged that peak site, uh, picked a peace pact that was signed, and he's saying that there was nothing of such. You know, just let's get your reaction concerning all of that, uh, Mr. Abdullahi. Well, uh, I, have, I have more questions I will ask him at this material time. Mm. Number one, why is it that Fulani are in a cordial relation, a hundred and one percent total peace with all their neighbors, all the communities that surround the Uribe people are in peace with the Fulani. For instance, the Ateng of Danawuri, the Tawe of Cameroon Tawe, the Rukuba of Rukuba Chiefdom, the, the Amo of, of Pengana Chiefdom, the, the, the Atizari of Josno. And even the bureau that we have been having issues with them. Now we are able to resolve our problem for the past one year. We have no issues with bureau. Only with that little, little things that may, may not be cleared immediately. Why is it that the, the, the issue of Iribe is bloody at all times? Okay, Let me so that back let, at let's you. Also ask so what's the issue two, really? Number two, why is it that they, they wanted to smuggle their problem into just north by hook or crook. Let him explain to us what happened at the one Sanga. Now that we have the investigation have gone through and they have exposed everything, every iota of the happening in Yelwan Sanga, let him tell us exactly what happened in Yelwan Sanga. Number three, please let him tell us the reasons, the black agenda, the nefarious agenda they are having when they are giving out their people, their blood of their people as a collateral, what agenda are they want, do they want to achieve? Why are they always in problem? The whole entire plot of state, today for the past one year, we have not recorded any problem anywhere in plot of state except Mengo. Why? Let him explain to us why. Why is it always Mango and it is Brody? All right, uh, Nuru Abdullahi. Nuru Abdullahi, let's, let's still stay with you now. I, I'd like to ask, do the Fulani yeah. headers, uh, do you have any issues with the Irigwe people? Are you in any sort of conflict? There are issues with, 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 with Irigwe, where they have been rustling our cows, killing them, especially in, 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 in Dogongaba, one and that general area where they will kill a uh, mother on on the second of february this year they killed five liaras and roasted 535 cows killed them there instantly in, in i have the pictures i can send you the pictures you see okay so if you have right there they have been repeating this thing killing our cows just recently in in Baduru summer, in this on the sixth of uh, November, they killed three Fulani boys. Two die in the hospital. They kill alongside thirty-eight of their cows. So these issues are there. It's like they are they are having an agenda where they are sustaining the conflict to a time that they will achieve their agenda. Let them come out and tell us what agenda is that. What do they want to achieve? Since 2008, they have displaced entirely the entire Fulani that we are resident in Mango Chimdom. They have displaced them. And up to today, they are alleging Fulani are killing them. Who Fulani? Which Fulani? Why are they moving into Kaduna State, into Rukuba Chimdom, into just south, into just north, into Rio, and killing Fulani, attacking them, rustling their cows, killing their cows? Why? Why are they Abdullahi. So, so I'd like to also to I, I'd like to come in at this point in time. Can you please hear me? Can you can you hear me? I'd like to ask. Like you are saying that uh, the Fulani headers are not responsible for this attack. Do you have an idea yes. who's responsible uh, for this attack on the Uyghur kingdom or community? 
I, I sincerely believe information have reached me that their armory has been filled with ammunition. So they are, they, are, they are looking way forward to sell their ammunition. They don't have the way to sell their ammunition. Who? 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 There is no conflict in the area. So they want to ignite the conflict by hook or crook. That is why they are attacking the Fulani, killing their boys in the rear field. Mr. Abdul, uh, Ab Abdullahi, I'm not sure you got um, the question correctly. Nuru Abdullahi, I'm not sure you got the question here. Nuru Abdullahi, I'm not sure you got the question. The question is, you are saying that the Fulani headers are not responsible for the attack on the Rigue community. Yes, they are not responsible. So if they are not responsible for the attack on the Rigue community, do you have an idea who is responsible for the attacks? They are themselves, that is what I'm, I'm Or oh, they are killing here. themselves. They are themselves, they are doing that to show the world, to, make, uh, to paint us black. That is their agenda. Their agenda is they will give out some of them as collateral to satisfy the world that the Fulanis are doing bad things to them, are killing them, destroying them, and doing this heinous act to them. Why didn't they allow the security to go into investigation and reveal everything that has happened in the area? Not even the hiding. They will not hide anything. Let them allow the security earlier. Let them not mention anybody. Now that they have alleged this is Fulani, maybe the attention of the security will go to Fulani. Let them allow it open. Let the security do a general investigation. They will uncover what is happening. So for them not to allow them to uncover what is happening, so they, they, they start alleging the Fulani, canceling the Fulani down for, 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 for this heinous act to attract the attention of the security towards what they want. All right, but Mr. Mallison. It is not working. All right, we'll, we'll try and, uh, you know, get um, counter-reactions now from uh, Mr. Davidson Allison, who is the spokesman of Irigwe uh, Development Association. Uh, I'm sure you have followed the conversation so far, Davidson, and uh, he's alleging that um, it is an intra, you know, Irigwe killings that um, your people are the ones allegedly killing themselves. And uh, can you verify, can you tell us exactly what's going on since this killings? Um, what reports have been made to the security officials and what is the, the situation right now? Are investigations ongoing? Because um, Alhaji uh, uh, Abdullah is alleging that uh, you, uh, your community is not allowing an investigation. What's the true picture? Uh, I, I want to make some clarif uh, clarifications here. If you have been following him keenly, you will discover that he has virtually been missing almost all the questions you've been asking him. He's been dodging. That is an attestation to tell you that he, he he's not even in tune with what he's even saying. And then he's just blabbing and then lying to the public. This is something that I wanted to put on record. You understand? I, I earlier posed out some questions to him that I needed him to have answered. Even when he said we signed a peace pact with them at the government house, he didn't make such clarification. There's another thing to tell you that that statement he earlier made was nothing short of a lie. You understand? And then let me let me bring him uh, closer. You know, uh, anyone listening to Nuru, you know, talking and saying regret people are killing themselves, you know, to serve as a a way of igniting crisis on the plateau. One will ask, you know, are we by any means will go to an extent of killing over 80 people that they killed in in June, July, and August in Riguelan? What kind of justification will that have? All the recently 10 people they killed at Tegbe, we the police commissioner was there, was one of the persons who visited the scene of the attack very quickly and very early. You know, one will begin to ask again, or on the 23rd of this same month, that they ambush and kill two people at Intervillage. One will also begin to ask, he earlier raised some questions about the neighboring communities they attend, the Rukuba, the Birom, uh, the Wazangam, the Afizere. My brother, when the spokespersons or these neighboring communities he mentioned will come to the public and say, they will tell you that they are not living in any peace with them. 
For instance, I am not the spokesperson of any of this tribe, but I can assure you that there are, there are, there are attacks in such communities. For instance, the Birom he talked about, they kill people at Kuru. Kuru, Kuru is a village dominated, made up of Birom people. They kill them. The Yelwazanga, is it the people that are there? They kill Anaguta people, almost over uh, 35 people, 33, sorry, 33 people there. And then he's coming out to tell us some kind of uh, stories here. Now, let me, let me bring uh, Anuru. On August this year, let me make, I like speaking fact, Operation Safe Heaven made a release. They arrested eight Fulani who killed three women on their farm. Ask him, were there, were there no arrest? They were arrested. But the question we are asking, what happened after the arrest? Like I earlier established, I don't like coming to public and then be making unsubstantiated uh, claim or, or, or statements. We have the voice not. They have been coming out accepting that they are the ones carrying out these attacks. The records are there. For instance, they've been saying on non-government, each time they call for meeting, they come and then they seek for forgiveness and say, let there be peace. Now, why are they coming if they know they are not behind the attacks? These are questions that he should ask, he should answer. Okay. And now let me clarify another thing here. Nuru does not live in Basa local government. He doesn't even have any iota of information and things happening. He only sits at the comfort of his house. They give him backdash and information that are not accurate, and then he comes to mislead the public. He doesn't know any of all of this. Okay, Davidson, Davidson, so, we, we have to come in at this point in time because uh, just as we coast it down, with all of this killing that's ongoing, where's the place of the Nigerian police? I'm talking about the security agencies. And what is the state government doing? So I, I, I did like um, um, Nuru Abdullahi to actually respond to this one now. Zema. So we, he's, he's mentioned the fact that you have also mentioned that there's been killings... Uh, on this other side. He's also mentioned that there's been killings. Yes. <clears throat> and yes. I know that, you know, there's a governor in that particular state. So what has the state government done? What has the police, I mean, have there been any arrests? Have really, people been arrested? Really at this point, we, the entire Fulani community in Plato said we appreciate and we cherish the Plato State government under the leadership of, of, of Barrister Simon Bagola Long. He has been doing all the best to do to resolve this problem, that unfortunately the problem is not being resolved. Let me give you for instance, the governor Solomon, of he himself, after Rukuba Road attack of 92 Fulani travelers going to Ondo, mm. after that the governor Solomon, of he himself, not assigning anybody, we discussed these issues. We started uh, taking, taking off and preparing some resolutions, but later they refused and dumped it away. We had a, 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 a mischievous press statement alleging the government and the Plateau State government, the, the Fulani, for, 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 for uniting themselves and fighting against the, the Iroquois. Number two, the governor has established very, very important and recommended uh, institutions to fight this insurgency and then bring peace to Plato State. For instance, the Plato Peace Building Agency. I recommend 100% the, the DG there. All right. Joseph Langman was, is doing the best every day on his feet, doing up and down to see how we resolve our problems amicable and resolve them and be in peace. All so right, Martini, all right, all right. Today we have what we call interfaith, uh, a plateau uh, interfaith uh, uh, dialogue uh, committee set up by the government of 
45 highly placed religion leaders in the state. We have 20, 20, 23 Muslims, 23 Christians from different denominations coming together, sit down together, discuss the issues, and then provide solutions. All right, thank you, thank you so much, um, Al Haji. Al Haji, I'm afraid that's as much as we can take, and we um, um, appreciate the fact that you have um, put it clear what uh, you think um, the the government has done so far to you know uh, you know make uh, that particular region uh, peaceful. Again, Nuru Abdullah is a Magban um, a chairman in Plateau State, and of course uh, we also had um, Davidson Malison, the spokesman at Irrigate Development Association. I'm afraid we can't really take more on this particular discourse. We may have to bring um, you guys on again. But then again, it is a call to the security operatives in that particular region to, you know, get into action and um, ensure that a thorough investigation is done so that there will be renewed peace, you know, yet again in um, across the various communities in Plateau State. It is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take yet another break when we return. We'll be focusing on the attack on Joss Correctional Center in a minute. Do join us again. <laughs>